Mr. Annie News got us a new solo leveling video. Let's see what he has to say in today's video. Sung Jin-woo's transformation seemed practically overnight. Yes. One episode, he's the world's weakest hunter with zero game. I think it's the hairstyle. The most important Sung thing is the hairstyle. Some, it's, it's the sides. I think the sides being cut, the, it's the sides and the back, right? That's pretty much it. Zero that is the biggest thing. Confidence and the next he's Sung Rizwoo still with zero. Sung Rizwu. I've heard of Sung Dripwu before. Sung Rizwu, huh? Okay, but the heightened muscles to offset that. It was a drastic change that sharpened his chin to the point. People are still in my YouTube comment section justifying how the stats distribution is changing his face. One dude was like, hmm, actually, the reason that he grew taller is because he's been leveling up and the vitality has grown. It's as simple as that. And I'm like, yeah. Okay, so I guess as he continues to level, he's gonna get more vitality. So by the end of the season, bro's gonna be what, like seven foot two? Yeah, that's your logic. And the other one is like, hmm, actually, the combination of perception and intelligence makes a person look more charismatic and wise and smart and cool. I'm like, what are you talking about? You don't have to justify it. I asked these questions for a meme because it's bullshit anime logic. First of all, gates are fucking opening in this world and monsters are coming out. No one's asking for science scientific reasoning on that so you don't have to give me scientific reasoning on how this motherfucker went to the fucking best plastic surgeon in Gangnam in South Korea and came out like this but you're arguing about how the stats are changing him come on now it could chisel diamonds yet one that happened so quickly it may have seemed a bit abrupt dude I swear to god these ab scenes got me get my got my video like limited ads it's not what I said dude I swear to god it's these ab scenes abrupt. That's not to say it wasn't this fast in the novels or manhwa, but there was a bit more to it as several factors layered his progression a bit. The first was the week he'd spent doing dailies before even trying the dungeon, then the next was Nurse Yura whose thirsty perspective showed- Wait, she, she's an actual named character? Yura Cho? You're okay? The Sung's development through her eyes. She was the first person to suspect Sung might have reawakened and- so she's been just like the thirsty. She's been just eyeing his workouts the entire time, the huh? only want to take note of some rather unique abilities of his. So as we go through that and the subsequent betrayal at the gate, all these details left out will once again show more on what it is solo leveling has to offer and right, hopefully give it to make me. the overall viewing experience that much better for you. Mm -hmm. but first, add time, add time. It's about time. time for my yearly PSA, so oh. if you like free anime and want to watch it right here on YouTube, you can do so hassle-free with nordvpn.com slash Free anime on YouTube? Any news. Just switch over to a- what do, you, what do you mean free anime on YouTube? Wait! What? Wait, 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 Muse Asia just straight up uploads Ragnacrim- This isn't even me trying to hype up his ad. Wait, this- Muse- Why can Muse Asia do this? Why? How? What? Do they- How do they have the rights to do this? Day they come out as well as what complete the fuck? playlists of anime- They have a license for- What the fuck? Okay. Well, honestly, this is probably a way better deal than fucking- Y'all saw what happened to Crunchyroll, right? Greedy motherfuckers saw Funimation go down and it's like, Huh, we're a monopoly now. Fuck it. We have no competition. Let's fucking triple our prices. Now fuck them, dude. Get this VPN. Go to Musasia, guys. Way better deal. Way better deal. And they wonder why people pirate anime. I would I would never pirate anime though, right, guys? Money back. I, I would never but do that. Covering chapters 16 to 20 from the web novel and chapters 18 to 21 from the manhwa. The first and most important thing that needs to be mentioned is that in the novel, Sung had checked himself out of the hospital before ever even going to do the instance dungeon. So all this stuff with the nurse and the chiseled body he got from his <laughs> dailies are actually things that happened prior to any of this. Okay. It's the main the reason why order. in the novels he was able to have such an easy time with it since an entire- So he was already super jacked in the novels, but in the order of events here was a little bit different. I guess to kind of emphasize, you know, Sung Drippu and like the, the cool transition from like episode, what's it, four to five. The entire week of stat gains left him relatively overpowered to it. Now. The way the novel had decided to show how Sung was changing was neither through Sung nor a recount of all his training, but rather through Nurse Yura Choi and the various observations she'd made about him. So Yura is that important, her observations? She just, she's the one that witnessed, you know, the, the transformation. About him. 
You see, it was late at night after a long shift at the hospital that Yura was out having dinner with the very friend who got her her job at the hospital. What the fuck? Such little minor details like these nurses have all these different background information. The two were discussing what they knew about hunters and okay. there was something peculiar Yura felt she needed to ask about. It was about Sung and the potential skill he might have displayed recently. If you remember back in my cut content from two videos ago, it was right after Sung had finished his penalty quest with the centipedes that Yura would notice fresh blood the on the sand. floor where his hand was. When she went to check the only possible place this blood could have come from, the cut that should have been there wasn't. It had completely vanished as if healed by healing magic, hmm. a feat she wasn't sure whether to be possible or not. So, as Yura asked her friend how it was hunters were able to heal so fast, the only answer she got had to that just has to do with him going to his punishment and coming back and succeeding, right? Do with healer class That's hunters. it, right? To her, them and their magic was the most common way hunters healed themselves. Yura then asked if it was possible for a hunter to heal themselves while unconscious, and that was something to which the answer was a lot more ambiguous. You see, the only recorded instance of something like that was through the special skill, Regeneration. We don't have that though, right? It's, it's just about the special quest punishment and stuff like that, right? An ability unique to magic beasts ranked A or higher, and not even all of them since only a select few ever displayed this skill. Okay. It was an extremely rare phenomenon that she'd never even heard to be exhibited by a hunter before. That's not to say it wasn't possible though, since the extent of her knowledge did only go up to A rank hunters. What I mean is that if there was to be a case in which this type of power was possible, the only place it could exist would S be up and there beyond. in the S-rank territory. It was a place in which the hunters within possessed all sorts of terrifying abilities, yet not many could be named since the information behind them was very difficult to come across. Mr. Guildmaster Che here is looking very menacing in every scene. He's got a lot of drip too, huh? Look at him, right? He's like flexing. He's got these cool glasses, they're like flashing white lens too. I mean, I want more of him, man. There was the one who could transform into an actual monster. Right, everybody was kind of hyping up Sung Jin Mu's abs, but um, I think there's only one other people, not one other person. Uh, where is she? Jammy. Jammy Uwu, <laughs> solo level, her thumbnails, dude. <laughs> oh, I forgot, yeah, see, it wasn't just Sung Jin Mu with the abs. We had, you know, Mr. Beck here with the abs, too. And honestly, Mr. Beck has like a fucking one, two, three, four. That's like an eight pack, dude. Himself, but other than that, the rest could be literally anything. There's a lot of fan service it for that guy today, to too. Sorry, to last episode. Unconscious. So, though the ability was very unlikely for a hunter to possess, it wasn't impossible for those up in the S rank. An interesting thought since Yura knew for a fact this was the power Sung displayed, yet contradictory since she also knew he was far and away at the E rank level. His rank was something she had- Even at E rank, because he's so hot, she was rizzed up. That's right. Become a little bit curious. All that matters in, 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 in the world is how you look, which is a terrible, terrible theme. It's a terrible lesson. It's a cruel reality. It's just like, listen, if, if Sung Jin Mu wasn't this good looking you think the girl would have this reaction a lot of people that's just how the world works man it's just people judge people by external appearance first before you get to see their character like sung jimu is a good person at heart or at least i think he is i think there's a little bit of a transformation in the inner psyches of this character as he continues to level up that people are saying that he's becoming very cold and ruthless but he's a good guy right curious about and out of a need to satiate such a feeling Yura had done some research and read up on his profile. His public record- The fuck? This is getting a little creepy. All of which were available on the Hunter Association's- Okay, it's what live on the website, okay. Website. Okay, never mind. At first, she was confused since none of this made any sense. Well, it's still kind of creepy! she remembered something she had overheard the other day. She recalled the mention of him reawakening. Second she wasn't awakening. when any of this was talked about, but she did know that this was the topic of conversation when the Hunter Association came around. That being the case, if Sung truly did reawaken as a high-level hunter, then this was the worst-case scenario for her chances of getting close to him. <laughs> she felt she probably couldn't even become his friend anymore since- So she wants him to remain at E rank. Because if he's too high of a rank, then he's too beyond a, a mere nurse at a hospital. So she wants him to- this is so fun, just understanding the perspective of these background characters that we thought were not important at all. And, and technically, not, they're not really, but it goes into such detail. It's just the idea of meeting an S-rank was near impossible these days. 
Their low numbers made them extremely coveted, and of the people who did get to meet them, they did so within their incredibly busy schedules. Obviously, this wasn't the state that Sung was in now, but Yura knew it was the inevitable outcome once word got out that he was an S-rank. I wonder, uh, this is her assumption, not a fact, okay, yeah, but maybe he'll be a strength in the future, but like, I wonder uh, if we're ever gonna keep, we do have our number, You're, we do have Yura's number, so are we ever gonna call that number? Who knows, man. Thank you for the super chat, it's commonly have appreciate that donation. Fortunately, that meant she still had time though, since it was pretty evident no one had caught wind of his newfound power yet. No one, of course, except for her. So, knowing this was her only chance to gain favor with Sung, this Yura nursing, began man. scheming of all the things she could do to try and befriend him. Number. I mean, it wasn't every day you were given such an opportunity, and the potential value behind it was near immeasurable. In fact, there were people who would spend enormous amounts of money just to meet an S rank, and even then that still wasn't a guarantee that you would get that meeting. This made Yura excited at all- People spend money to try to meet up with an S rank, and they still don't get that meeting? They want to meet up Mr. Guildmaster Che, and then they offer like, I don't know, $2,000, and it's like, nope, sorry, still busy, you're gonna keep that 2k though. ...possibilities awaiting her, and the grin on her face was all but indicative of it. She couldn't stop smiling at the thought of this secret she had all to herself. The next day brings us back to Sung's perspective, and with a week having passed since starting his dailies, the difference in his body- Wait, wait, wait. He's doing like, uh, his workouts on like a little extendable bed on the bottom, huh? <laughs> he's, he's doing all his like workouts on this like other bed down here. That's Since funny. Starting his dailies, the difference in his body was starting to become a talking point for yep. the nurses. Damn. Occasionally, he would check himself Damn. out the and he too would admire the increased height, trimmed fat, and wider shoulders. Did increased height, trimmed fat, wider shoulders. Now, I can believe wider shoulders and trimmed fat, but increased height? Like, how the fuck did he get that? Don't tell me. Don't give me your fucking explanations. I already made fun of you. Stop it. Him, he felt he just looked not as frail anymore. All sorts of useful muscles had started appearing across his body, and his body itself felt overall more nimble and agile. It was obviously too much of a change to attribute to exercise alone, so the only explanation was that this was stats, stats changing him. Yeah. In order to maximize the usage of his rising strength, his body was growing in a way that would allow that, leading to that thought that... Per okay, that's an interesting argument. So, because the strength is involved... Well, everything, he, everything... Think about him like a container. He's like a container, and the inner strength of him is trying to, like... It's growing and growing, and the container can no longer hold itself, so he's going to continue to grow. But then that logic doesn't make sense when, you know, okay, so how much is he going to keep growing? Is he going to he's gonna become a fucking mu muscle builder? What, is he going to become like 7 foot 2, 7 foot 5, and keep continuing to grow taller? There has to be at some point, maybe the container, you could then argue that the container at some point becomes rigid enough to hold all that strength because the container itself also grew. That's the only justifiable idea you can really have for going with this mindset, but we're getting, there's no, it, it doesn't need to be that deep. It really doesn't. There's no point trying to think about this. It's just fucking anime logic. Who cares? Perhaps too much more may lead to that bodybuilder type body. Now. More and more, the nurses would start to take notice of him, and eventually it got to the point where it was just straight up uncomfortable. Since his goal was to raise his stats without anyone knowing, Sung knew it was best to discharge himself and continue his training elsewhere. Okay. Luckily, this was something both the association and the hospital were hoping for, since the time and money spent on him were assets they probably felt were wasted. I mean, this was after all- Oh right, they did cover our fucking hospital bills. A hospital only for hunters, and to continue to give Sung that VIP treatment was to divert those same resources from someone else who was a higher rank. Unlike the S ranks who received small portions- Whoa, well these are kind of out of context scenes, so it doesn't, doesn't really matter, but cool to see other actual hunters in like gear instead of regular clothing like, you know, our dungeons. ...of an entire country's budget to get healed, Sung was just a freeloader costing them money at this point. So, it was right as Sung was in the middle of his discharge process that Yura would make her move and ask for his number. She seemed quite sad at the fact that he was leaving, but that was probably the very thing gonna see her? the confidence to do this now. You're- I just start- I should have made this joke before I watched the episode. Juhi has been power crept by Cha Hei-in already, but like goddamn, Cha Hei-in hasn't even shown up to the story and interact with Sung Jin Moo yet. Bro, Yura has power crept Juhi already. What the fuck is she doing, huh? Yura already got his number, dude. 
The encounter had gone pretty much the same, but rather than her cell phone, she had instead given him a notepad. Oh. She had forgotten to bring a pen as well, but fortunately for her, Sung was able to materialize one out of his inventory. What? It was the fourth time the random loot box item had actually come in handy for him. We got a pen? In the anime, these were only mentioned to be useless. We, we got a pen in the loot box? In the novel, it seems the daily loot box wasn't so random at all. Most, if not all the rewards from them eventually found their use. One day he received a raincoat, then the- <laughs> just, bro, just got a North Face jacket. Next day it ended up raining. Another oh. his water cooler ran out of- What? He got a random water machine? Cups, so the reward for that day was a cup to replace them. Okay, the cups, the cups, okay. It was as if these random- That is so random and ridiculous. Like, what the fuck are these details? The words from his dailies were practically tailored to him. That's just a small bit of information I found interesting, but the important thing to know is that all this was still in the hospital. All that training and all this discovery of how the system worked was before he left to take on that instance dungeon. Only after he discharged himself did he finally go and do the stuff from episode 4. I think it makes sense why the anime would do this, because obviously in the anime during the battle against Kasuka, Sung Jin Mu still looked like this, you know, the form that he had before, right? And this is kind of the moment, the defining moment where he does change, right? So I think it makes sense how the order of events happening is different here. That then leads to the level ups and discovery of his attributes from within the dungeon, which to me I found was a more gradual lean into a system Sung was kind of just thrust into. We were given those deeper explanations of agility and perception that I mentioned last episode, and all that worked towards easing us into how it is this system really aids his evolution and transformation. I won't re-explain how it is those attributes all change the more he levels up, but if you want to see for yourself how they work, feel free to go back and watch that episode here. Smart YouTube thing right now, just to kind of mention. So basically, once you're engaging an audience, the best thing for YouTube algorithm is to understand that your audience enjoyed your video and wants to watch another video immediately after. So by plugging his content like this, saying, oh, hey, you got the other, I got this other stuff that explains some of the questions that you might have in this video, you know, smart stuff, smart stuff. Moving on to when Sung was finally home, in the morning when Jinnah had stumbled across him, it was actually right after he'd just finished doing his dailies. This was quite the shock to Jinnah because as a student who woke up at dawn to do as much studying as she could, it was rare to see him ever be awake before her. The reason he was doing his dailies immediately was mostly to try and get another key for an instance dungeon. Okay. He'd been trying for the past four days after completing the last, but unfortunately- I guess they're a pretty rare drop, huh? I mean, it's- I mean, the instance dungeon gave us so much stuff, right? And so much levels, so... Yeah, but <laughs> bro is just fucking spamming the gotcha. Got nothing but random rewards not nearly as useful. This did also mean he had four days of stats waiting to be applied, but with zero certainty on where he wanted to put them, a lot of thought was needed in order to make a decision. So, as he went through each and every attribute, strength was good and something he didn't regret. Agility was essential when facing stronger enemies, but not so much when facing weaker ones. Even so, with the way it went practically hand in hand with strength, it was right up there as just as important. Perception was useful for detecting threats and sensing auras, while vitality was as useful as having just more health HP bar. to be. When it came to intelligence though, this was the one thing that Sung really wasn't sure about. Despite bringing it all the way to level 27, he neither felt smarter nor felt his memory improved. So the int is not improving his IQ? I thought that these stats have like an actual effect on you, but okay. His mental processing didn't become faster either. The mental processing is all just agility, isn't it? Is agility was explained to be not like making you more dexterous, but being able to like mentally process things like coming at you a little bit slower so you can like counter or dodge or stuff like that, right? Either so all this was what led him to the conclusion that intelligence was magic related. Something he knew he definitely didn't need right now right now and we're getting baited because it's like is Sung Jin Woo gonna be a magician it doesn't look like it it looks like if he's gonna specialize it's gonna be some kind of assassin rogue thief kind of thing because he keeps working with daggers but where are we going with this intelligence man that still left all the other four though so when it came to prioritizing between one or the other the ranking he chose for each of them was this first he would agility first and then basically just intelligence last yeah invest in agility Next, he would focus Sense. on perception, then Health. after those, he would maybe do some vitality. Yeah. Since strength was already at a decent level, Sung figured now would be a good time to balance out all the other attributes. Specifically agility, since this was clearly the most important after strength. 
with this being the attribute that sped up his vision and made his enemies seem slower. It yeah. was the core factor determining his success at dodging and subsequently his ability to counterattack. It didn't increase physical speed like how Sung initially thought, but with strength doing all that instead, the two worked well together to improve both his reaction time and his ability to move. Should we be spending this many points though and strength and agility though? Are, are we getting baited though? Move quickly. It created this effective synergy that made the two practically essential together. Strength meant nothing if he couldn't hit his target, and landing an attack was useless if he had no power. That is true. It's like all that power means nothing if you can't hit your target. It. True. So this was the core reasoning behind why Sung decided to level up his agility now. As for his choice to neglect vitality, well, agility- Well, who cares? Just don't get hit. You, I mean, why do you need HP, man? You don't need HP. Just don't get hit. You just kill the enemy before they kill you. Easy, right? He just didn't synergize well with it. It wouldn't make sense to level up an attribute whose purpose was to tank hits when at the same time your focus is We're to level up an attribute that exactly an enemy just does dodge, with. bro. Just it don't would be get a waste hit. of points in a time when every point was essential. That didn't mean he was going to neglect it forever, but for now he would just let his level up spring that attribute up. If you're wondering why he chose two strength, eight agility, and the rest perception, the only reason was because multiples of five looked clean to him. Yeah, I mean, if we're at 48, I do kind of want to round it off to 50 and get other stuff up. Yeah, makes sense. They were nice rounded numbers that gave him this pointless sense of satisfaction. It was when his phone had rung shortly after this Yura. that Sung was praying for it to be the association. Never mind. Reason being that he was eagerly awaiting his next opportunity to go and fight. Before he would always delay picking up the phone out of anxiety for what he knew was coming, but that is an old ass iPhone, man. Now he couldn't wait to get more chances to raise his attributes. What he thought was going to be exactly that, though, was nothing more than his landlord checking up on him. Oh, his apparently nice landlord in the anime, but it's kind of mean in the webtoon, right? He wasn't just inquiring about the money, though, because as a person who'd looked after Sung since he was little, he was always making sure him and Jenna were doing all right. Oh. Oh. I did, oh. It almost sounds like a fucking, like a, what's the word? Like a guardian angel. Like, there, there's, he's straight, this landlord has been taking care. I mean, I guess our dad's gone. Mom's just put in the hospital. I guess it, ha it has just been the siblings. So that's, the landlord has been just kind of like, not, like, kind of raising us. Not really, you know? That included never raising the rent in all the years they'd been. Never raise the rent in all the years. Do you know what's happening, dude, in Canada? Bro, at least in my building, we're, we, got a, we got a rent lock, right? We got a rent cap. So basically, landlords cannot just, like, come up with some arbitrary figure. Like, if your rent's 2000 a month and, and the landlord's like, all right, next month, 2500 get the fuck out. They can't do that. They can in Ontario. They can in Ontario because they got rid of the fucking uh, the, um, the rent cap. Fucking stupid decision. But... Basically, they had like a fixed percentage that could increase each year illegally, but the landlord never increased it. How nice. How so nice. In their end, even offering to delay it whenever he knew Sun was struggling wow. with it. Wow. So in a time where rent was always increasing, the landlord had kept Sung's expenses at a measly $375 every year. What? $375 USD for that fucking apartment? Especially in South Gatson. Uh, <laughs> You gotta add a zero at the end. $3,750 for that rent per month in that apartment? Then I would actually believe it. Yes, that actually does make sense. But $375 per month for that fucking like giant apartment? Ain't no fucking way. Ain't no way. That is the most unrealistic thing in this show. I don't care about Sung Ji Moo getting taller, becoming more handsome, or the powers he's getting, or him becoming a fucking player, or him becoming, you know, these like walking statues. Those are all believable. This rent? What the fuck? My immersion is broken. That still put a major dent in Sung's pocket, but it was something he could afford and still have cash left. Ridiculous. Over. This answers a lot of questions because everyone was like, how the fuck is this dude affording this apartment as an E-rank hunter? Is like, are, is the Hunters Association just like paying for rent? Like, what's going on? Granted, it was only like $200 to spend on everything else, but it was enough to get by until his next money-making opportunity. So, though the landlord in the anime was portrayed as a caring individual, the extent of it wasn't fully shown as he truly emphasized how Sung needed to always put his family first. He knew Sung was taking care of his mom and sister and didn't want him neglecting his body in order to do so. Now, 
This did still leave Sung in dire need of cash, which in turn led into the explanation of how it was hunters made money. I'm sure you're familiar loot. with the core methods loot. of how they do, but to the uh, the mana crystals and type of stone, right? Expand on it just a little bit. Everything pretty much came down to rank. Obviously, the easiest way was by slaying monsters, but if you were fortunate enough to have an A or S rank, that privilege also came with sponsors, commercial cameos, and <laughs> sponsors ads, bro. <laughs> Same thing as YouTubers trying to get bigger so they can get sponsored <laughs> affiliate links. <laughs> Everyone's just trying to make it. And even TV appearances. All additional sources yeah, of Yeah, 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 they are a fucking magazine. I do like this. I do love the magazine cover of how they make them look like celebrities. But look at Guildmaster Chad, dude. He always looks that's like a fuckboy. <laughs> look at that pose. The, the lesser ranks weren't exposed to. For those who were below the A rank, your income was dependent on both the quality and quantity of the dungeons. No sponsors for you! The quality was dependent on how capable you were, and the amount was determined by how experienced you were. So, for Sung who had neither the experience nor the rank, the amount of options he was presented with were always very limited, forcing him to have to look for a position in a private raiding party sometimes. These were hunters too weak to join a guild, but at the same time too strong. Are you telling me this is how they looked? Huang Dong Suk's party looked like this during the intro? Apparently in the webtoon, they made it a lot more obvious about how ominous and evil they were, with red eyes and red aura. If this is the frame that they show us in the webtoon, the first time we meet their party, it's like, yeah, we're fucked, we can't trust them. But at least in the anime, it made it a little bit more ambiguous, right? to do work for the association, putting them in an awkward position yeah, like this, filled with like this, inconsistent right? raids and incomplete parties. But even so, the rates they did get often led to thousands of dollars monthly. It That's was more good. than enough to keep themselves financially stable. Unfortunately, the same couldn't be said for Song, and before you ask why it is he just doesn't get a real job, the reason is because he was always on call with the association. Okay. If they were to call while he was on a shift, the cost of missing out on both that experience and pocket money was definitely not worth whatever minimum wage he'd be making at a real job. Someone did make a good point. It's like, bro, like you ain't making shit, dude. And an E rank dungeon by yourself, a minimum wage job working at a fucking KFC or something would make more money. But I guess this argument kind of makes sense. Experience and pocket money was definitely not worth whatever minimum wage he'd be making at a real job. Okay. So his only option was to find Yo, this, a job. This, this is, what, look at this, right over here, the middle one. To those who manipulate demons, monthly salary 200,001. For those who could become a member of something made up of only magic type hunters, please something. Only those who can control demons are qualified. Like what? Demons? What the fuck? Up here on the hunter board. That's when he saw the newly posted raid with Wang and after a short phone call then cab ride over, his position was set and job confirmed. A few things to note about the contract though is that unlike Quota. how it was with the association, raids done privately had zero insurance. The line of work was so incredibly risky that no Basically, it's the perfect opportunity for a scam. Rate made it possible for insurance companies to make a profit off of it. The next was a segment which stated he wasn't allowed to fight, and that's something that we're going to talk about in just a little bit. A non-combatant. that, though, we need to highlight Sung's annoyance with Yu Jin Ho first. So, both the novel and Manwa had Sung straight up trying to ignore him, but I really? think the Manwa portrayed it best. I guess... Jin Ho came off of like a rich kid snob. He never was snobby though. He was a good kid. From the fed up facial expressions to the not so. Okay, okay, okay. I see. So this is how Sung Jin Woo perceived Jin Ho. <laughs> yes, hunting is just a hobby of mine. So I guess if you're out here fucking, you know, trying to pay rent, trying to just fucking survive, right, by risking your life, and you had this rich kid come up, and this is how you perceive him. Yeah, I get it. I get it. Those so subtle bits of envy. Sung was very much trying to distance <laughs> Look himself. at him. Of course, Jin Ho just kept on talking anyway, and it's that oblivious persistence that really hammers home the type of character he is. He's a good kid. Now, despite all of Sung's newly attained power, he was still tense whenever he stood in front of a gate like this. After years of treating each as a battle of life and death, it wasn't so easy to dissociate those memories of pain from these new ones of leveling up. There was lingering trauma from all the times he'd been hospitalized. It's when we get into the gate itself that Sung would use his enhanced perception to determine exactly what it was they were dealing with. To everyone else, the dungeon appeared the empty bugs. at first, but to Sung, he knew right from the get-go the monsters they were dealing with were insects. 
Now, insects were a particularly troublesome type of enemy because not only were they hard to kill and attack in groups, but their dominance on the ground meant getting knocked over was an instant death sentence. Whoa. The type that no hunter ever wanted to see in a dungeon the was ants. a nest of ants since those the were ants. the most difficult out of all the insect beasts. Why are the ants so hyped up? Why? Why Why are ants like the strongest monsters ever here? There were numerous of stories insects. of hunters entering what seemed like an easy dungeon, only to get wiped by a coordinated onslaught of relentless ants. What Love the fuck? Why? Well, onslaught of relentless ants? Luckily, this wasn't what Sung was dealing with here, but had he not called out the initial ambush from above, it's likely a lot of the party would have died from getting should have never saved them, man. Should have never saved them. We should have just used this opportunity to let them die. Sung Jin Woo should have thought even beyond and scammed at this moment and let the party get wiped out from these ant ambush and we should have collected everything and left. Knocked over. He had saved pretty much everyone from that instant death sentence I was talking about. Now, on, on the topic of ants, random science fact. I'm not sure where I read this, but basically, ants, in relative to their overall body weight, their strength is fucking insane. Insects? are fucking insane when they scale up to your size because a small tiny ant yeah ants can live 10 times their size and think about it, it's a tiny little ant that weighs fucking nothing right and it's like carrying around fucking a big leaf and stuff but when you see it on the ground yeah it doesn't really it doesn't really bother you because it's a tiny little thing but if the ant was the size of a human and if you scale their strength appropriately with that it gets a little bit fucking terrifying right talking about now the part of this that made Sung so incredibly frustrated was the fact that he couldn't fight no matter how badly he wanted to. Since his contract legally prevented him, all he could do was watch and analyze. He would think about how it is he would approach the battle, then observe every opening and envision a counterattack. The part that went to frustrate him the most though was that, despite all these openings making the bugs easy targets, not a single hunter fighting was seeing them or capitalizing on them. It was a bunch of missed opportunities that left him looking. Oh, basically his advanced like experience and like vision is now telling him that, oh, these, these are amateurs. They're, they're, there's so many, so many like missed opportunities and wasted movements. Like it's after this that the anime, manhwa, and novel all make their own creative decisions, and the core difference between them is the way that the betrayal is set up. You see, the anime doesn't really hint at it at all, whereas in the manhwa, numerous signs are given right... <laughs> like, look at this. If you see a panel of Hong Dong Suk looking like that, with the red eyes and the smile, like, hmm, I wonder if we're being set up. Gee, I wonder. Get go. There's evil eyes, shadowy faces, and a <laughs> like, look at warning. Beware the lizards. Which make it abundantly clear that that's where we're headed. They had even made Huang say he hopes Sung's instincts don't pick up on anything unnecessary, and if that wasn't enough, they had Sung himself reaffirm it. The novel does something a bit more on brand though, since the moment Sung felt he was being set up, he genuinely hoped that they would actually follow through on it. The feeling really? first came when he sensed every hunter glaring at him, and it was from that point on that Sung eagerly awaited what he knew was coming. Eagerly awaited? Bro wants to fight him? He was thoroughly ecstatic to know that he might actually be able to get some use out of this group. Cause last time we got betrayed, we couldn't do anything about it. But this time, he's like, happy? He's like kind of excited, like, oh, round two, motherfuckers? Let's see it this time. Try me. Try me. So, it was once they had finally made their move that Sung couldn't help but smile knowing he Real? was getting exactly he was smiling? what he wanted. He's he happy about this. He was from the more hostile reaction he showcased in the anime. Whereas huh. Sung was surprised and a little bit angry, in the novel he was stoked and focused on the opportunity that they'd just given him. That's crazy. I never thought that he'd be actually so happy and eagerly excited to like be like betrayed because now it's like, yeah, I got the powers. Let's see what's going to happen this time, motherfuckers. In fact, he had even started warming up before they had closed the entrance on him. Bro's warming up? This the tense showdown that the episode ended on. So, aside from a little bit extra show... Ah, Huang dong Suk's little brother, right? So this is what he looks like? That's his back of the little brother? How dare you betray your own country and move to the States? I feel like that's a little bit of a spoiler, but maybe this, some context we'll learn next episode. But this little brother, right, has been kind of hyped up. Like, I don't know why they just immediately just introduced him, but he seems really fucking strong. And last episode, we were talking about how there's only like seven S ranks in Korea, right? So it's like, okay, if we take out Hwang Dong-soo, what could happen next episode, right? Casing Huang's S rank brother. 
that's pretty much all the cut content from this episode. All right. Now, I'm kidding. Wait, wait. They, they, did he just say S-rank brother? That's pretty Thanks, S-rank brother. Is this spoilers? Kind of. It's not too big. I think these are suspicions that are assumed, right? I think we all were kind of... Yeah, we kind of got spoiled here. We, I mean, it's not that big of a spoiler. I think it's pretty much obvious. It was it, like, it, They didn't confirm it, but they were leaving a lot of, you know, trails of, like, breadcrumbs, so you can come to that conclusion. But I think him being in the States is actually kind of a big detail. Him being an S-rank, not so much. That's pretty much all the cut content from this episode. Now, I'm curious to know which approach you would have liked to see better. Mm. Would you have wanted the more eager betrayal? No, I like the anime style. I like the anime style because they made us really uh, think about what could happen. ...from the novel, or perhaps the more tense surprise betrayal from the manhwa and anime. I think the best combination would have been the way the tense betrayal in the anime, but also have the side of the Sung Jin move from the novel that was eager and excited to get betrayed so that he could fuck him up. I think that would have been the best comp like uh, balance between the two. Let me know which down in the comments. Y'all know what to do. Please go give Mr. Andy News a sub, like his videos, because he always gives us great breakdowns, and I look each week to new solo leveling videos to farm. That's right.